But I didn't consent. <sighs> Won't even address that. Welcome to the week six pick'em episode podcast here on That's Good Broncos. We'll start with a little bit of Broncos news, then we'll go into our picks for the week, update the uh, Patreon status. People <laughs> wanted to see who was in last place, so we'll make sure we'll highlight the highlight the the worst Patreon week to week pickers where we pick against you, Will and I, uh, and I don't think we did great last week but we, there is broncos news um today's episode though brought to you by DraftKings sportsbook america's top rated sportsbook use code dnvr when you sign up at DraftKings. just use it don't even ask why just go nope. in there put in dnvr bet your life savings and that helps also my coffee company bench warmer brew Dot com. Now that also very good company. I can assure you uh, today I had a little bit of the armchair blend. That's urinating trees coffee into the bag, did a little mix with mine. And honestly, it was very good. Dark bean, medium roast bean. Mm. Mm. Okay. Will, why don't you fill me in on John Brown? They signed him to the practice squad. Uh, we all know John Brown. He is a 31-year-old veteran wide receiver. Uh, started with the Cardinals, most recently with the Buffalo Bills. Had 458 yards and three touchdowns in just nine games in 2020. He got hurt. Yeah, he was but- injured a good chunk of last year. And uh, Gabe Davis sort of emerged to, to fill his role. So yeah. still a lot of production, though, for, for Brown. A lot of production, and he had a 1,000 yards just two years ago in 2019. That was when he was 29 years old. Uh, he also had a 1,000-yard season when he was um, – or in 2015. So he's had the production, uh, especially a couple of years. And I think he he adds a little bit of a veteran element and gives them a little more stretch-the-field kind of speed, at least making safeties respect the uh, – Deep ball, long ball while Jerry Judy and and KJ Hamler are out, which they desperately need because we've talked about it. We love Cortland Sutton and we love Tim Patrick, but uh, they don't necessarily give you blazing hot speed. Um, Just hot. They give you, they give you hot speed, not not blazing blazing hot speed. And you need, you need that stretch the field element. You need Teddy to throw a couple go routes, keep the safeties honest. And And look uh, at this. That'll open up other things. Number two tweet that pops up is your bench warmer ah, tweet of John go. Brown toasting, toasting Stephon Gilmore against the Pats. Is that Gilmore he burns there? Yeah, that was the uh, that was the 2019 Defensive Player of the Year right there. Yeah, he torched his Gilmore and McCordy on the same play. Come on, I'm excited about the John Brown signing. Obviously, I don't know. What if he's going to play this week? He's on the practice squad. They got to activate him. Don't know how quickly he can learn the uh, the offense or whatever. But like maybe the week after, like well, then you play the Browns on a short week. Anyway, the two guys I would have that were free agent. Well, David Moore's on the practice squad, but John Brown, David Moore would have been two receivers. Knowing the Broncos needed receivers, that I would have went after. Like as a a David Moore's on the active roster. Yeah. So uh, I do like this move for John Brown. I mean, for the Broncos and uh, bringing in John Brown. Don't know when Judy's coming back, but hopefully this can help. Also, uh, they say Mike Boone ready to go this week. (laughs) Running back Mike Boone. You barely have enough carries for two running backs. Yeah. I'm like... (laughs) Mike Boone was supposed to be, you know, the low key great signing this offseason to add that that solid depth. It's why they moved on from Royce Freeman. And uh we're, our question is over under on the amount of carries Mike Boone gets this week. I'm setting that at 1, Will. I think he gets half a carry. No. Half a carry. <laughs> uh I'm going to go with under. I under think he's one player on special teams. Yeah. 
should make me look stupid, Pat Shermer. Uh, you know, yeah. Feel the game out, and after Javante Williams breaks off a forty-nine yard run, uh, stay consistent and keep feeding your hot player the rock. Just show me that one fucking time. Show me one fucking time in a game when it looks like you know where the momentum is. Again, Did you see, I think it was um, my enemy. I think it was Dan Orlovsky who posted something about the Broncos' first two series were literally run, run, pass, run, run, pass. And it was something like the Broncos didn't throw the ball on first down until they're like under two minutes left in the first half. Something crazy like that. But Dan Orlovsky, Orlovsky had a good tweet about it, and it basically confirmed what we – you know, believed we saw in that, especially early in that Pittsburgh game, that there's just yeah. no variety to the run pass pattern on offense. No, he, he, he can't feel it out. And nothing. no, yeah, he'll no pass variety, no play action, nothing. Now, a little tight end screen. Like, how about that? Like, you don't need to <laughs> give Noah Fant an end around or anything, all our rich Gangarello, but you don't target your, your tight end until the fourth quarter, your first round tight end. Uh, how about open things up with a little tight end screen to start the game? Something like yeah. that. Something creative. Show us you got something in there. Yeah. Come on. The week before, there was one play design I liked, uh, but I forget what it is right now. And to be fair, there were a couple opportunities Teddy missed in that game. So, uh, you know, it's a it's it's a. It's just fun to blame it all on Pat Shermer. It is, point. yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think we're all at a point where we want to see some kind of change, either drastic improvement or change in terms of coaching. And yeah. so, I mean, they're not going to fire Vic Fangio in the middle of the season, I don't think. But I, nope. I do believe they would fire Pat Shermer. So it, it's on our radar for sure. Yeah. yeah. And you got an experienced guy in Mike Shula behind him. Ooh, Mike Shula. Maybe he's creative. He might be. He might Maybe be. he. I mean, he's got the pedigree. I like pedigree. Yeah. Big pedigree. Coached Alabama. Quarterbacks coach. Yeah. Got a little college flavor. A little college flavor in that in that ass. Mm. Maybe a little college. Fr- a little a little spice. A little college flavor. Yeah. Spice it up. I liked your Kellen Moore. I think Kellen Moore may be the hot candidate right now. For well, you got, uh, yeah, you got three. Coach. You got three hot, hot Dable? candidates. You go Dable, Dable or Moore. Who do you want? I, well, we you got know. Dable, Moore, and you got to throw in Joe Brady, who's like my age, I think. <laughs> oh, I look at him. He's got a he's got a sweet fade. He would be kind of a McVay type in terms of swinging for the fences on a young guy oh, uh, wow. who's only had two seasons as an offensive coordinator at the NFL level, but doing good things with with Sam Darnold. Um, see if he can keep it up throughout the rest hmm. of the season. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I like Kellen Moore. I like Kellen Moore. I like Kellen Moore. I like Dable too. I think Dable, Dable's got more of the leader type uh, leader type label on him, I think. Yeah, physically not as maybe not as hot as the other two guys. Dable? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he's sturdy. He looks strong. Sturdy. Yeah, strong. yeah. He can you know, he wouldn't blow away and I guess the wind. Correct. Um, anything else with the Broncos before we go in? Oh, yeah, before we pick all the picks. Yeah. I mean, we haven't talked about it yet. You and I, but the whole Gruden thing <laughs> and we can't, I don't want to spend too much time on it. Cause you talked about it with Tom, uh, but the Broncos are going into a situation where the Raiders are unprepared because usually, you know, you fire a head coach around a bye week or late in the season um, when the games don't really matter anymore. But, you know, the Raiders, they fired John, or I guess he resigns late Monday night. So you figure that their, uh, that their special teams coach turned interim head coach, Rich Basaccia. Basaccia. Yeah, Basaccia. I think so. This is going to be quite the Italian matchup of head coaches. Mm, Fangio versus Basaccia. But he's only got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday to prepare for his first game as a head coach, which is – Yeah. That's a tough 
uh, tough introduction to the NFL. So my question is, <laughs> is Vic Fangio better than a team without a head coach? Oh, God, I hope so. I really hope so. I mean, here's I my think- thing with Gruden is like, I, I, for, um, my, for the fortunes of the Broncos, our team, I would like to see him as the Raiders head coach, because I think he makes poor decisions in terms of the roster and personnel and especially the draft. Yeah. But I do think he is a good play caller. Yeah. No, that's fair. And he called the offense. So like, that'll be the biggest adjustment too, is, you got to not just have a new head coach, but you're also you need the offensive coordinator to call the the plays during the game. So, I mean, who is the Raiders' offensive coordinator? That's a good question. I know the defensive coordinator is Gus Bradley. Yeah, that's who we all thought would be. Uh, it's Greg Olson. <laughs> Oh, not right, the tight right. end, but the crazy looking Greg Olson. Yeah, not third leg Greg. Um. Yeah, he. <laughs> there's just, the first picture that popped up of him is uh, he looks scary. Um, so yeah, that's a lot to adjust to. Now we've seen a lot of teams when their coach gets fired or leaves, they win after that. Like the team comes together despite uh, the coach, you know, leaving. That's going to be one of the X factors in our game preview. But this feels a little different. It feels like the way Gruden went out kind of is one of those things that takes the toll on the whole team. And I think you saw it against the bears last weekend that the Raiders didn't look like themselves at all. They were just outplayed like that whole game. So I think the Broncos have a very good chance to win this weekend and they really need it. It's a home game for Denver as well. It's, you know, division rival. Like a lot of things are in the Broncos favor at this point. They're also wearing the blue uniforms. Are you a fan of the blue uniforms? I like them. Uh, they're not my favorite. Uh, I know Dave Damashek will disagree. I prefer the orange. Uh, orange jerseys, white pants. Um, the blue, I don't know. I just don't, I'm not a fan of navy blue, really. Never been a, whatever that blue is, don't love it. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is navy blue. There are a lot of like this navy blue, blue teams. And that looks a little darker, but... Yeah, like it's a classic color. It's too classy. Give me a little, give me a little uh, pizzazz. I mean, we we know we're, we know what we're waiting for. Come on, we all want the, us, the D back. Bring the D back. It. Let us have it. Come on, come on. Bring all right, it. let's bring it back. Let's look at these picks. Will let's we're fifty it. and thirty on our picks. Not bad. Try and find uh, where we stand. Oh, man, we dropped down to 22. <laughs> this is right. But look, there's not a whole lot of difference. Well, How, oh, wow. P, Jesus Christ. P Whoop still up there. 61 yeah, congrats and 19. To Mr. Whoop. Billy Bob Joe. How are you doing that, man? Wow. Yikes. Leon Slavkin, Fred Barber. Those are your top three right there. Ooh, Christian Thigpen at six, 53 Wow, sneaking up, Christian. Panthers fan. Tied with Aiden Gurrell, Patriots fan. Ah, oh, yes. Trevor Price and Zach, or uh, Steve Tarr, right next to each other there. Yep. Kevin sneaking up the, the rankings. CJ DiVincenzo tied with us at 22. All right, so we're going to go, who is in last place? Where shall the shame be? Uh, this is going to be like people who joined a little late, I think, or stopped picking. Let's see who um, who's made at least like 50 picks. Okay. Well, I got – well, Scrubber here, he does a Washington football team YouTube. Let's go back down here. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll call this area kind of like the, the low end of the totem pole. Is Scott Kinder officially last place or Carson Neff? Brandon well, we got Connor Kennedy, who's a Bills fan, 40 and 22. Oh, Connor. Connor, you got to pick it up, buddy. Got to mimic your Bills, my friend. We got Sean Parker, the CEO of Napster at 46 and 30. 
the only man who can take down uh, Facebook. Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah. All right. So those are the rankings. Um, thank you guys for participating. Yeah. Oops. No, no, no. Where am I? What am I doing? Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Damn it. What the fuck, ESPN? Ah, make picks. That's what I want. Cool. There we go. All right. Now, I... Nope, uh, nope. Cover that up. No free ads. Get get that truly hard set, seltzer uh, logo yeah. off the screen. Come on. Look at that. There we go. There we go. You got to pay us for that. Oh, no. What's it doing? Jeez. <laughs> All right, internet. So Stop white acting like a jerk. Okay, so I did put the Buccaneers at number one in my power rankings to try and curse them. This would be a huge vote of confidence in my curse if the Eagles upset them. 97% of the people picking Tampa to win this. So it looks like uh, the 3% that showed up are <laughs> Eagles fans. Um, or believe in the curse. Potentially. Yeah. Maybe those are cursed believers. Uh, I saw a stat today on NFL Network that Jalen Hurts, outside the tackles, is getting like 7.7 yards per carry. It's like second best in the league. Buccaneers, of course, their run defense is nasty, but maybe that's like a a loophole to actually put up some ground yards against Tampa. And they're going to be without Levante David in addition to their other injuries. But... We're taking the Bucks here, right? Well, we are, ta- we are taking the Bucks. Um, they do have the disadvantage of being the road team on Thursday night. Something yep. the Broncos will have to deal with next week. Feels like they have to go on the road on Thursday night a lot. Our, our Broncos, but yeah. yeah, we'll save that talk for next week. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking the Buccaneers. Oh wow! Now here's a classic. Who you gonna pick? Will <laughs> Dolphins or Jags? 63% yeah. of the people say the Dolphins at 1-4, and four, the 0-5 and five Jags, 37%. Oh, man. They're, where's Tua's status? I saw Brian Flores say that Tua would tell you that he's 100%, which makes me think that there's some disconnect between the Dolphins and Tua himself. Yeah. Tua returned to practice this week. Unclear whether he plays or not. Really would like to make the pick for this game later. Oh, man. This is a does game that Jags it, How much win. of a difference does it make, really? I don't know. Oh, this is 7.30 a.m. Oh, this is in London. Oh, yeah, because we fucked up the London pick last week. We we're like, Falcons at home. I kind of like that. And immediately <laughs> after I posted, they're like, that game's in London, idiot. Oh. So this is a okay, Jags home talking. game in London, eh? Yeah, but the Jaguars, um, you know, London is their quasi home field too. London College. I, I want to pick the Jags. What kind of shenanigans do you think Urban Meyer is going to get up to in a in an English pub Ooh. after after two or three pints of, uh, you know. Dark Guinness, Guinness beer. Guinness, Beamish, whatever. Mm-hmm. This one's tough, but who do you think? I I think I'll take the Jags. Yeah, let's take the Jags together. I mean, they're not good last week, but I like what Trevor Lawrence is doing. Now they've got the the recipe. They're getting hundred plus <laughs> yards out of James Robinson. Yeah, they are giving Trevor him Lawrence the ball. slowly getting better. They've got ball catchers. Dolphins, man, they've just been smacked around so much lately. All right, Packers going to Chicago. Chicago three and two. Green Bay four and one. Ninety-two percent of the people are saying Green Bay wins this. Green Bay's uh, favored in this game. Aaron Rodgers made an amazing throw to set up the Mason Crosby game-winning kick. Justin Fields hyperextended knee, but uh, gonna play. He's been cleared. He's fine. I think the Packers win. I don't think we got to spend too much time on this guy. Go, Pack, go. All right. Oh, Bungles, Lions, Lions at home. 11% think Detroit. 89% saying Cincinnati. 
Are they going to make a field goal this week? Because that has been the Lions' Achilles heel. Ooh. And it has been the Bengals' weakness, <laughs> at least last week. Lions win on a game losing missed field goal by the Bengals? That's a possibility. I think I think I like that. I think Dan Campbell's tears will rejuvenate this this Lions squad. Let's you want to pick the Lions? I kind of want to pick the Lions. Let's They're at it. home. Come on. Let's They're at it. home. They've been so close so They're many gonna times. Win. They're going to win eventually. And close against good teams too. Yeah. All right, Detroit. There we go. <clears throat> we picked both 0 and 5 teams to uh break their record this week. Yeah, maybe this That's is pretty ballsy. <laughs> Oh man, look at this shit show. <laughs> Texans Colts. A bottom of the barrel AFC South matchup. Colts have victory ripped away from them by Lamar Jackson. 91% of the people think the Colts get a win here. And this is after the the Texans put up a pretty good game against the Patriots. Davis Mill Mills uh, probably played his best game of the season. Uh, the Pats and our, the Texans, I think, missed, missed a kick or two in that game, too. So, like, they they did. They could have beat the Patriots. Ooh, but my gut says Colts. I don't know. What do you think, Will? Is it too late to switch the in season hard knocks from the Colts to a team that is going to be in contention? Yeah, that would be nice. That's going to be really sad at the end of the year. Like, but, go back to the Rams for all I care, hard knocks. Okay, here's a quick question for you too: Is if you're the Texans, would you just stick with Davis Mills? Oh, it, it, in terms of like when Tyrod's healthy, yeah. Poor Tyrod. Poor I mean, Tyrod Taylor. He Tyrod. I'm not gonna um, pretend like Tyrod's not better, but is the goal to be that much yeah. better at quarterback this year versus? see what Davis Mills gives you, and if he doesn't give you anything, just keep losing. Because if you're the Texans and you see enough out of Davis Mills where you don't feel like you have to draft a QB, then you're sitting pretty in the draft because you're going to have a high pick. Yeah. You can turn that high pick into multiple picks. Um, Yeah, poor Tyrod. Another week two injury that just paves (laughs) the way for a rookie. I see what Davis Mills gives you. But I do think the Colts are going to win this game. I agree. All right. Before we move on to the next pick, I got to say my friends over at DraftKings are giving you some offers that I'm going to read now. It's been a great start to the NFL. Oh, wait, hold on. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, has a week five, six offer, week six offer. Is that what week we're in? That football fans should jump on. New customers can bet just $1 on any NFL game and win $100 in free bets if either team scores a point. The last 0-0 tie in the NFL was a 1943, so I'd say this is a no-brainer. DraftKings customers can also get skin in the game. Hannibal Lecter style. With new same game parlays. Combine multiple bets from the same game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, the more money you can win. DraftKings, of course, is safe, secure, reliable. Best of all, you can deposit, withdraw your money whenever you want. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code DNVR. Bet just $1 on any NFL game and win $100 in free bets if either team scores a point. That's promo code DNVR this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the National Football League. Got to be 21 or older, Colorado only, new customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. All right, well, I'm back. He's back. Like whenever I do the DraftKings, you just like start checking your phone. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um don't that worry, I didn't not... text you to do any more script writing during that read. <laughs> you never Did, know. On, answer this question honestly. When you okay. see a text come, come through from me, are you just like, oh, fuck? Uh, you know, like 99% of Americans, um, I don't want to work more than I do. <laughs> but 
No, I always remind myself like I could be, you know, I could be working at a supermarket right now instead. Fair instead enough. Of, instead of writing jokes about my favorite sport. So it's really not that bad. No, I know. I know you like it and you never complain. You always are. Uh, you show up when I make last second requests. Metaphorically. I just know if I were in your position and I saw a text come through, I'd just be like, oh, God, that means I got to work now. Oh, shit. I was about to start watching a movie, and now I got to write some jokes about Gruden getting fired. Anyway, I like uh, I like, I like like delving into our relationship live during the show. You it's, know? it's um, you know, I'm sure most people watching who work, you know, normal jobs that are extremely demanding have zero sympathy. Oh, yeah. And they're probably right. Probably right. Yeah. Unless they compare their job to my job. I'm elated every time I see a text about a new script. (laughs) Yo, can you jump in this? Give me some info. All right. Rams, Giants. uh, 99% of the people are picking the Rams. This would maybe be an interesting game if Saquon didn't turn his ankle (laughs) into a scary, scary looking. It's almost like a a Halloween pumpkin. That's have how ever, like swollen it was. Have you ever had that happen to you? Because I have. Like I sprained oh, I my ankle playing basketball and it looked like that. Did it? Yeah. Yeah. It happened. The crazy part is how quick it happens. Yeah. Like you just look down and you're like, it almost looks like it's dislocated, but that's how much it swells. Yeah. There's a, a YouTube channel. I forget the guy's name. He's a YouTube doctor. Got his degree from YouTube doctoring.com. But he yeah. all he does is football player injuries. And like he's good. Like he's a real doctor. And he describes like what would be happening. And he was pretty spot on with Saquon's. I don't mean to poke fun at him because I actually like his videos. Uh, but he he was talking about like the swelling happens instantly when it's this kind of sprain. Yeah. The way the ankle bends, you know it's a lower ankle sprain, like a normal ankle, not a high ankle sprain, which is worse. Interesting shit, but if you saw it, you're, you would like. There's no way he's coming back for a long time because that looks horrible. And then Daniel Jones got a really bad concussion, so I just think the Giants are too beat up to be competitive in this game. I'm with you. I'm with you. If they, if they have to go with Mike Glennon, mm. and I'm assuming they will have to. Uh, Daniel Jones was you know, stumbling across the field. Didn't look good. Would it, it wouldn't make a difference. I'd pick the Rams either way. Yeah. We Just will be watching the Mike Glennon versus Davis Mills stat lines. <laughs> They're going to go neck and neck. Go neck and neck. Oh, look at this. Look at the Chiefs at two and three with the Washington fuck That's team. That's pretty funny. The Washington fuck team. <laughs> oh, God, I hate that organization. Um yeah, not the this players week especially. That, not the players they currently have. Um, but uh, if you're a Raiders fan, you really got to hate Washington right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, if you're a Raiders fan, who do you root for in this game? You got the division rival Chiefs versus the team that brought your head coach down. Wow. I don't know. I mean, I have, you know, friends who are Raiders fans who are happy that, that Gruden got canned. Because yeah, he's not a yeah, good... because they didn't see a way out of that ten year contract, and it was almost like a gift. Yeah, I, I mean, I have there. a friend That's... who it happened. He's been complaining about Gruden since he got there, and yeah. you know, rightfully so. And we and learned Gruden gets fired on his birthday. It's like, what better present can you ask for? Oh, that was his birthday too. Yeah, no, no, not Gruden's. My friend who hated John Gruden. Uh, uh... It could have been Gruden's birthday. I don't know. I feel like we did your friend that. send out some bad emails too to get fired. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the Chiefs bounce back and win this game. Washington, Taylor Heineke's fun. He and, is. But man, they but just he can be fun against this Chiefs defense, don't you think? Oh yeah, I think it it could be competitive for sure. <sighs> I mean, there's I a pathway for Washington to win, and it's Heineke goes off against a really bad Chiefs defense, and they get pressure. They get four man pressure up front. Yeah, they that the that pass rush needs to show up at some point. Do you want to take Washington? Do you want no, to go out on a limb? Not at all. Okay, <laughs> okay. Chiefs. 
And then we got Minnesota at Carolina, 40% picking Minnesota, 60% picking Carolina. I think this should be more a more 50-50 sort of split because I think the Vikings are a little bit better than we thought, and I think the Panthers maybe a little bit worse. They're just two games skid. Yeah. Good defense versus good offense here. Sam Darnold had a rough outing. Do they get is Christian McCaffrey coming back though? That's the question. I see your question. The Panthers should have won last week against the Eagles. They I think they're up something like 16 to 3. Um they're up two scores in that game and they gave it away. But I think they're going to I think they're going to bounce back. Yeah, Dalvin Cook didn't play last week either. So Yeah, but Alexander maybe, Madison is like 80% as good. Feels Yeah. Good. Let's go Carolina. I think McCaffrey, uh, Matt Rule said hopeful he comes back. Yeah, I like Carolina too. I like their I just like their defense better. So get McCaffrey back in that. Darnold gets safe with that ball again. All right. Oh what man. Game. This is a fun game, Will. You've got an explosive offense versus a team that is getting very good at digging themselves out of a hole in exciting fashion. The Ravens have played probably the most exciting games this season. The Chargers played maybe the most exciting game last week. This could be a high-scoring game again. And the Chargers are horrible against the run. Oh, my God. I'm a little surprised by the distribution of picks in this game. 61%. 61% on the Chargers on the road. Do people realize the Chargers have to go from – Los Angeles, Southern California to the northern most part, the northeastern most part of the map here. This is uh, the quite the journey. Lost. Yeah. Yeah. Let's no, take I'm the Ravens, the Ravens, huh? I'm picking the Ravens. I like the matchup, especially in early um, game. Come on. Yeah. Herbert and Lamar were the two best QBs last week, but I think there's a mismatch here in terms of. The Ravens being able to exploit the Chargers' run defense. Oh, man. This is another nice game. Cardinals, Browns, 62% picking the cards to go into Cleveland and get the win. I think this is the. I think this is Arizona's first loss, Will. I do, too. Fuck, yeah. I think the, the Browns, like I said on the show with Grassi this morning, like they played... A, a damn near perfect football game and lost. So it's like they, you've looked back at the tape. If you're Cleveland, maybe there's one or two plays you want back, but you're like, shit, we did everything right. Let's just do that again. And we'll probably win this week. That said, Arizona can score points just as quickly as the chargers, but uh, I like the Browns. We'll take the Broncos. We'll talk more about that later. Cowboys, Patriots, only 11% of the people taking the Pats here with their two and three record. <clears throat> Cowboys next to maybe the Buccaneers, hottest team in the NFC right now. This is, um, isn't this kind of a weird sort of like quasi primetime afternoon game? I guess it's just two big brands with the Cowboys and the Patriots, but yeah. there's no real reason to pick the Patriots here. That Navy blue that I don't like. Yeah, let's take a lot of navy blue in this one. We're taking it. Yeah, we're taking the boys. Wow, look at this Seahawks going into Pittsburgh without oh, Russell God. Wilson. Can we flex this, please? <laughs> Get the, oh, the Chargers Ravens in this slot. Another primetime game for Seattle. Ain't that nice? I yeah, kind of like, like the Steelers. Steelers. Uh, yeah, I will take the Steelers as well. I liked what Geno Smith did against the Rams. Um, Give a team a week to prepare against Geno Smith, ten days really to prepare against Geno Smith, and yeah, especially good Steelers defense. Yeah, and the Steelers did something last week; they ran the ball well against a good run defense. What's what's Seattle's defense? Bad. Very sometimes bad. Sometimes okay, a lot of times bad. They just released corner Trey Flowers. Um, I just, you know. Pittsburgh lost Juju, but 
Uh, oh, who did they? They added they signed, Anthony Miller, yeah. which I thought was a nice, nice signing for them. So Steelers win that one. And then, ooh, Buffalo versus Tennessee. I like Buffalo. Yep. Sorry, Tennessee. Buffalo's, I mean, power rankings aside, because we don't want to curse them. They are the best team in the league. Yeah. And look at that, Will. There's 14 games this week instead of 16. 16. Yeah. So our best and worst will be a, a tiny bit easier. <laughs> a little bit shorter. It is that time of the year where things start to slow down ever so slightly. Yeah, that, that'll be nice. Who has the bye weeks? That's the question. Uh, I know San Francisco has one. And let's see. Who in the AFC? That's on the Colts. The Jets, I think. Jets, you're right. Yeah. Oh, I think the Falcons have it too then. Coming out of London. <clears throat> yeah, that would make sense. Yep. Oh, so you have four teams, right? Oh, you would have to. Yeah. You would. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you can tell us in the comments. We'll figure it out we'll eventually. Figure it out. Thanks for listening. Thanks for playing in the Patreon Pick'em League with us. Um, again, oh, I'm going to post the Broncos uh, prediction episode on both channels this weekend. Just to remind people on the main channel that the predictions go up on That's Good Broncos. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Follow Will on Twitter at Guillermo Yaves or the Bench Warmer Brew Twitter account. He runs both. Good night. John Elway plays his entire career without an ACL. Good luck.